about the, the vantage, I mean, we have someone that's designated as the deck chief who's in charge of the deck, but uh, the winch operator and the crane, they, they are part of that operation, but also are high above it, so they can often see things and point out if there's oh, somebody's doing something, you know. If someone was, were to reach for the tether without the high voltage gloves on or something like that, they can get an idea, an alert. Who hasn't answered this question? Beth, if you were not in a, a co-lead scientist role aboard the ship, what role would you want? Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm doing all these, uh, retaking this quiz over and over again to see <laughs> what I need to do. <laughs> Putting in different choices. Um, uh, what are you angling for? I don't know. I'm just, yeah, <laughs> fascinated with how this quiz works. Um, <laughs> Yeah, what, what what other job would I like? Um, I don't know. I like to cook, so I might want a job in the ship's uh, galley. It's a, a job where you can make a lot of people happy. It's kind of a fun yeah fun task. Oh. Um, yeah, what other jobs would I like? I don't know. I'd love to be an ROV pilot. That'd be fun. Yeah. Hmm. So you got two very different things. You have one, like the cook, or one the ROV pilot. Right. Yep. As you can see, that's why I'm like taking this quiz over and over again. Like <laughs> I, I don't know what I want. Um. <laughs> Is cook actually an option on that? Um. The, they, they, I don't I know. The, there was one, the, um, the Mariner option has all of the ship's roles listed under that. So. Yeah, it's kind of a catch-all, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think it separated it out by whether you're an officer or yeah. another role. Kwame, did you take the quiz or do you have a thought on if you were not in the cultural liaison role, what role you'd want on the ship? I got crew. You got crew? Nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's just easier for me that way. I know, it, oh. I know it doesn't seem like it on this expedition, but yeah, the hands-on things are like probably better for me. Mm. Way better. Shout out to the ROV pilots. Shout out to the <laughs> ROV pilots. <laughs> and video. <laughs> and video. And, and video. Man, and <laughs> and <laughs> everybody. Yeah, I'm watching all the screens from back here, and I'm like, mahalo, you guys. Mahalo. Oh, yeah. I don't, I am very grateful for Steve and Sarah Calameo. Um, Canala, uh, come on. Canalu. Yeah, thank you, Canalu. Um, for the data logger role, because that is a thankless but incredibly <laughs> important task. Um, I say thankless because you have to chase people down to get things, get it all organized. It happens behind the scenes, um, the, but uh, it's so critical, right? Like we walk off this boat, and if that part hasn't happened, then you you just walk off like, oh, okay, that was the last couple weeks. I don't know what I'm doing now. <laughs> so appreciate that. But it is not a job I want. Mm. <laughs> it's gotten better over the years. Let's look quicker. We have a lot of automation now that helps us. What what light you got there? Um, with our Catholics? systems. Whoa, we're getting some weird, weird light going on. Yeah, yeah. Argus cam. Yeah, we're checking out the lights. It's usually when one light. Yeah, it looks like it was off to your right, to your left hand side there, right? Yeah. That works. I want to say it's going to be the port. Because. Want to log that too? Should be okay. <laughs> yes. Subsea party. Where's the disco ball?
What is today? Friday? Mm -hmm. Black Coral Friday. Yep. Black Coral yep. Friday. Well, yeah, Black Coral Friday. <laughs> Friday <laughs> I like that. Tw Black Coral Friday. 30% all, all samples. Um, <laughs> if you collect more than three samples, we'll take an additional 15%. When do our um, ship to shore interactions start up again? I believe back on Monday. On Monday. Um, most of the schools have. Most of the schools are gonna have um, break. I think for the past holiday. So. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, they. I think the our lead communications, our lead of communications, is saying that Monday it's gonna start. I tried up it a few times. I couldn't. Okay. Yeah. Get it. Um, so what Beth is referring to is that um, while we're on these expeditions, OET offers the ship to shore, the ship to shore interactions. Um, these are thirty minute, these are thirty minute interactions where we talk where we discuss the the goals of the expedition, some uh, provide some updates as well as the general operations of everyday life. Well, the general aspects of not only the Nautilus but OET and other gems. So, um, when I'm not too sure about the full availability of what is it called? Of the for the ship to shore interactions, but we'd like. You, but if you guys are, ex are would like to get involved, then we would please. Yeah, go to the check out the Nautilus, Nautilus website. Live. Yeah. Well. Yeah, NautilusLive.org, and then if you go to the education tab, there's a right there on the front there oh, yeah. place to sign up. And yeah, although there's not, as Kalamea was saying, there's not a lot of slots left, but. Um, especially for audiences that might be in Hawaii, um, there might be uh, more chances of connecting because of the better time window, maybe. But it's a very full schedule next week. And if any of our educators out there in Hawaii are interested, I believe that there will be a second, there will be another expedition coming up to Papahanaumokuakea um, in the middle of this month. Um, uh, yeah. And then that'll be from, what month are we in? November? Yeah. It's, it's it'll be just yeah December eighth through the twentieth yeah um, but yeah yeah and you might have better luck with interactions if that's what we're talking about yep. yes signing up for that second and also you know we'll be back in in April as well so definitely keep that on your radar for signing up ahead of time yep and then if any of our other educators out there in Hawaii that are concerned that are kind of that wanted to get a little more context to be able to have more questions so the three websites that we're probably going to recommend are going to be first of course but not this live dot org. Um, that's going to give you guys some insight into how you guys can get involved with the with the expedition, some of the technology and available educational resources. Um, and then zooming out a little bit outward into the monument, right, we have two sites. The first being um, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs website. They're a co-trustee entity in the monument. So oha, O-H-A dot org forward slash papa hanau mokua kea. That's oha dot org forward slash papahano mokuakea. Second is going to be the um, is going to be the monument website that's put together by Noah, and that's going to be papahano mokuakea dot gov. Papahano mokuakea dot gov. So if you're out in Hawaii and you're or well, just anywhere out in the world and you want to get involved or want to get a little more context as to where the expedition is taking place, we would encourage you guys to check out the, one of those two to three websites.
Kalameho? Yes. Do you know, um, although it is COVID time, so maybe these facilities are closed, but is there a place, uh, a physical place in Hawaii that people could go to to learn more about the monument and the science of the monument or anything like that? Yes. So for the monument itself, there it's it's on the... It's on Hawaii Island. It's going to be in Hilo. It's going to be the Mokupapapa um, Educational Center. And I believe that that's the area where um, there are curations of various aspects of the monument from like cultural heritage things, um, maritime heritage, some of the other educational resources that may be available over there. Um, actually, if you hear Andy Collins on the 4 to 8 watch, mm -hmm. I believe, he's actually the... Um, He's actually the representative from the line is the education coordinator. So, 48, ask education questions about the monument. But yes, the <laughs> Mokupapapa, the Mokupapapa um, Education Center is going to be the one physical repository that I'm aware of. Yeah. yeah. It'd be great when people are allowed back in that facility to maybe, maybe in the spring, to yeah. do some cool live interactions between the ship and that facility. Yeah. But even then, so the, the websites are well equipped with educational resources for ev for everyone to familiarize themselves with. When I was looking over the tabs, we have things that are available from primary education, like K, pretty much yeah, K to 12. I'm not too sure about secondary education, but I believe that people can, you can get involved with the monument anytime after that. Look into the various groups, the various subgroups that are the, co well, the advisory boards too that make up the monument. Um, they are basically comprised of various stakeholders from not only the community, but almost across the archipelago. And I'm going to go so far as to say maybe the broader Pacific, but yeah, plenty of ways to get involved. Another important update for the monument that we're looking at on the website right now is that, so the conversations have begun and the, the period for comments is open right now, but um, Noah is, is, maybe is looking into National Marine Sanctuary designation for the monument. Um, you can go to papahanamokuakea.gov forward slash sanctuary designation. Um, and then you, you can get a little more information about over there. So I can read the, I'll just read the abstract since we got some blue water going on. Um, so hano hano na aina kupuna, honoring papahanamokuakea as kupuna or ancestral islands. Um, this is a tribute to papahanamokuakea as a sacred ancestral place to Kanaka Oibi on Native Hawaiians who honor this extensive seascape as an area where all life emerge and evolve from and to which spirits return after death. Native Hawaiian kupuna, or esteemed elders, have strongly advocated for the long-term lasting protection of Papahana Mokuakea from the beginning and instilled the vision and values that set the course for a collective journey caring for this sacred place. Weaving together past, present, and future, their legacy is foundational to guiding Native Hawaiian engagement in the active protection and management of Papahana Mokuakea. And moving forward with sanctuary designation, our, the goal is to continue to honor their legacy and vision towards ensuring the permanency of lasting protection of this place for future generations. Sanctuary designations will provide another layer of protection to continue honoring this place and, would not dim and will not diminish any existing protections. Um, if you scroll down the page, it, goes, it gives you a little bit of history in terms of like the, preser the preservation history within the monument, um, as well as some of the, and then there's also a tab for public comment. And then Beth the other night made the, made the observation that you can submit your comments in both um, Olelo Hawaii or Hawaiian language and English as yeah. they're the two legal and official languages of Hawaii. Um, yeah. Thanks for that reminder. No problem. And there's a lot of information on that same page too about what the designations is um, and how the monument is managed, so you can also learn more about that um, in case you're interested but don't quite know the technical details of monument management, sanctuary management, all those kinds of things. Times like these are probably the best time. Blue who water time? Oh yeah, who knows, but in the blue water. You'd be ready to jump on with us here. Yeah, feel your zen and share it. So we've already passed the 1,000 meter 
water depth mark on our way up. We are in, re for those who may have just recently joined, um, we're in recovery mode, returning from a dive to an unnamed seamount um, just southwest of the Don Quixote seamount that we were diving on the other day. Bringing back a couple samples with us. We should be on deck within a little over an hour. And then the next dive will commence at 8 a.m. Hawaii time. Visiting Timana Seamount. Oh, it looks like if, uh, Renny, are you okay with people looking over your shoulder at Flader Mouse? Um, Flader, I'm on a high pack right now. Oh, okay. But Someone's looking at Flader Mouse. Yeah. Oh, no, is that high pack? Never uh, mind. Are you yeah. okay with someone I, looking over your shoulder sure, on high pack? Yeah. I was just, uh, taking, uh, putting in the coordinates for the next dive. Exactly. So oh. our audience can get a sneak preview on where we're going tomorrow. Yeah. So we are, we, uh, we finished at the Don Quixote Seamount a couple past few dives, but this dive, which uh, you can see right here, I'm kind of waving my mouse around it. Um, but then over here, this is our current dive on this unnamed Seamount over there, but we're going to be heading to the Tomana Seamount. Yes. Which is in this region over here. And I... I don't, it looks like we might have a couple of dives there, but the first one is on this um, north, northern kind of, northeastern flank yep. ridge. So, um, yeah, what kind of depths do you think we're going to be um, yeah, crossing? I just, I just had the dive plan up, and it looks like we're going to start around 1840 meters and go up to 1200 meters. Or at least that's the intended track here along this ridge. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be hitting some shallower depths tomorrow. We'll see what that translates to in terms of communities. Oh, that's a really nice view of that ridge. You can see that there's some slope failure features on both sides of that ridge structure. Yeah. So we might have some really interesting topography to look at tomorrow. So stay tuned. Um, a question for maybe Jess and Jake. If if we didn't have lights on on the ascent, what would happen? Um, It'd be pitch pitch black. Yeah, it'd be very dark. Um, we, if you, if people are referring to kind of the bioluminescence and whatnot, uh, I don't think our camera. We've tried before. You need like a pretty low light camera yeah. to collect that. Those those very sporadic photons. Um, so for our cameras, you would just see dark. Um, we have actually tried that before when we we're sitting down um, on the seafloor and turning off all the lights and it just, you don't see anything. <laughs> um, you'd probably see a really nice pizza slice, you know, neon pizza slice, but mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty much it. All right, yeah. Speaking of, why do we keep the uh, the lasers on during ascent and descent. Oh, well, we can turn them off. It's it's only if you want to see the be for vendetta logo on our screen. <laughs> <laughs> Sending lasers off into the distance. Yeah. Pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that raises an interesting question. What's the attenuation of those laser beams? Oh, I know light is about. 200 meters, give or take, depending on the wavelength. But Those are 532 nanometers wavelength. We could I probably look at the attenuation yeah. of that in seawater. Yeah. But usually, like, sea surface, like, you usually only see light to, like, 200 meters depth, I believe. At that point, it gets, it fades very quickly. Uh, 
I'm gonna just say they go forever. Yeah, yeah, I think they're <laughs> they're on the bottom as a giant isopod chasing them around or something like that, like a cat. Are they angled down or are they angled dead ahead? Uh, probably looking pretty straight ahead, maybe a little bit of down, but pretty much as ahead. This would be the most ahead, but it, you can't really see the difference in <laughs> uh, yeah. the angle. Yeah, I, you could have fooled me that you did anything different. Fun fact, they used to be red. Yeah, of years right. ago. Really? And those those dissipate a lot yeah. faster. Yep. Red's fastest. Is that why we switched slowest. to green? Yeah, I think so. What and about you wouldn't really see the too much of the actual beams. You'd see the, the two dots. So it depends on what you're looking for. I mean, if you just want some subtle red dots in your view, that's one thing, but which may be actually what you would prefer, but these are pretty, pretty powerful. I think we should have one green and one red. <laughs> yeah, that would be so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> but very nautical. Make it three and go uh, full on. Port and starboard. Christmas colors. Or All right. <laughs> Uh, that would be so frustrating to look at <laughs> analyzing the video. <laughs> we could wear 3D glasses and then it'd be real fun. Oh, yeah, we oh. do red and blue. <laughs> <laughs> Has Herc or Little Herc ever used um, the cameras that can do 3D imaging? Oh, I don't think so. Uh, uh, it has stereo yeah, we have cameras. St downward stereo cameras. Do you get some photo mosaic that can make a three dimensional model? It's also done structure for motion from the video. No, no um, I'm thinking the kind where you actually like wear the three D glasses while you're diving. Oh, I'm sorry. We're just yeah. we're in the weeds. Um, <laughs> no. no, I don't think so. That's I <laughs> have used one ROV that had that. And uh, it was pretty cool, like seeing a sediment push square being huh. taken, like, and it felt like I was right there, oh, in front of the camera. Uh, we did have a um, a 360 cam that was actually Papa and Alma Cook, a NA101 cruise, um, from Alan Adams' lab at MIT. Yeah. Yeah. Media lab. I do know that Embari uses one, and I think they found a woolly mammoth tusk. Like recently, yeah, um, I saw a news clipping about that. The ROV pilot used the, uh, like three D, I don't know, camera, or whatever they have to when he was sampling it. So. Huh. Oh, cool! Mm. Very cool. Still on my quest. So yep. Put that on the holiday shopping nanometers. list for this year. <laughs> a mammoth tusk. No, three D. Uh, <laughs> 3D camera. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, and a mammoth tusk. And a mammoth tusk. And red and green lasers. Yes. <laughs> no. So earlier today, around sunset, there was some bait ball activity and some birds. I saw you looking out that way. Did you see anything besides fish and birds? I did not. I did get the binoculars out, and Steve and I were taking a look, but didn't see anything much more than big, shiny fish. Okay. Looking like they were maybe trying to escape. You know, it seemed like they were kind of driven up the surface and then it would kind of like dissipate and then it would come back up at the surface a little bit further away. Mm -hmm. so.
Yeah, what would be your guess that might be causing a large bait ball like that? Well, usually it's because there's a predator nearby, right? Yeah. Trying to eat them. And Since we didn't see any spouts. Or no, anything. we didn't see any. So maybe some of those white tip sharks could be yeah. that we saw the other day. Yeah, I think we've seen those on a few dives now. The oceanic white tip, which is a fairly aggressive, opportunistic, pelagic shark species. But they're beautiful. They're really graceful. Cool to see. And they've been coming into view kind of in the last 10 meters of our uh, recoveries here on the ascent. So keep your eyes peeled. You might see them tonight. Um, and they are, have been associated with these little schools of striped pilot fish. Mm, okay. I didn't know that part. Yeah, I've been keeping my eye on the uh, winch cam to see if sometimes we've seen them show up, but it doesn't seem that I've seen anything. Yeah, not, yeah not yet at least. We're, we're what, still 730 meters yeah. from the surface. <laughs> Might be a little deep. And our ascent rate is still, do we have, can we see that here? I don't no. think so. What's our ascent rate? You it's just on, have to do it's math. It's on heart gooey. It's on at, heart. yeah, 17, 18 meters a minute right now. Okay. Pretty good ascent rate. A uh, viewer says the deepest they saw them on our previous dive was 100 meters. The shark? Yeah. In front of Herg's cam? Yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't there for that one, but that's pretty deep. Yeah, I actually don't know what depth Herc was at when we when I was in here and saw we saw the shark in the camera. Yeah, I've only seen them kind of in the last ten or twenty meters. Got a little jelly there in Argus view. Oh, there it goes. Oh, maybe that was our dive when we when we paused to do our mm -hmm. protocol at 100 meters mm. and then the shark came into view. Yeah. I mean it and that's when I remember seeing it. I just don't remember what the depth yeah, was. Yeah, that was at a, yeah, that was 100 meters. Thanks for the reminder viewers out there. That was cool. This this time we actually um did our release protocol before we left the seafloor. Uh, and as part of that, um, just kind of releasing from the, the tasks we'd spent the last hours focusing on and moving on to the next task. Steve, when we are allowed to recover the samples from the ROV, I would appreciate your guidance on the sediment push core recovery, since I haven't done that yet, I'll, in terms uh, of how to get it out of the quiver. There's a trick. 
Yeah. I'm sure there is. Um, the, the best advice I can give is just to take the whole quiver off and we can disassemble yeah. it. Okay. And um, the, keep the stopper intact. Yeah, and then like, is there like a wing nut or something in the bottom? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Great. About how long has it been taking to process samples after these dives? Um, different amounts of time for different tasks. So for the microbiology focused work, it takes me about an hour per sample, uh, whether that's water or rock. Um, don't know about sediment yet because I haven't done that. So we'll see. Um, and yeah, I don't know, Steve, what you would say for processing the eDNA and the other biological samples? Yeah, um, it takes us about five minutes to process, to, to filter uh, a liter of water for eDNA. So that's um, 20 minutes to process the eDNA samples, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes to process the eDNA samples for this dive. Uh, given the four we have, the rocks are pretty quick and easy, uh, provided that there's not a lot of attached biology. We tend to scour them and look for opportunistic samples of things um, that we can send to the museums. There's a lot of biology on there that we don't see um, sometimes, like uh, small sponges and uh, coral polyps sometimes. So those don't take too long. And then the biology, usually we try and process that quickly as possible um, because the tissue tends to start to degrade as it forms. And uh, yeah, we want to try and keep the DNA as fresh as possible. I realized this morning that yesterday, as Thanksgiving, was the um, kind of the midway point of this cruise. So we're halfway done, a little more than halfway done now, which feels strange. Yeah, we've also completed over half of the original planned dives. True. Yeah, in a way, it feels like we just got here, and also that we've been here forever at the same time. Forever and ever. If only we had a name. <laughs> For our shift? Yeah, a watch. What are our contenders at the moment? We've got... Blue water bangers. <laughs> We've got. Uh, I think it was I think duty it was or leisure. I think that was blue water warriors, maybe. Okay, blue water warriors. All right. Blue water bangers is so cool, though. What is try try? What is it, Steve? The fish. Chonoclops. Chonoclops. <laughs> I kind of like the chonoclops. Chonoclops. Chana Cops. Chana Cops. Yeah. There's not an L in it. Or like a Simon Q somewhere <laughs> in the spelling. <laughs> Full transparency for everybody out there. Um, I did not know that there's a Simon T C in, what was it? Tinafor. Tinafor. Yeah, it's a tricky one. So, you're not alone out there. Yeah, a lot of these scientific words are not always straightforward how you would spell them. Yeah. Thankfully, Google is there to catch us. Um, OK, so that's like three three potential names. There was another one we were discussing. Yeah, it got really long. It did get long. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to vote. 
Sorry. Now Koa, Ola. I don't, I don't think Koa is. Okay. Excited that one's about like, that one. It's long. Okay. What is it? Steve was a big fan of alliteration. It needs to be alliterative, yeah. Yeah, what was yours on Steve? Um, I don't remember. I think yours was Blue Water Warriors. That that was today's. Oh. Yeah, was I, it I had a different one a few days ago. I don't remember what it was. Was it the Krusty Flakes? <laughs> oh my god. No, I don't think so. No. I don't remember hearing that one. No, but. Did it have to do with corals or sponges? King coral. Microbes in the front, sponges on the Oh, side. yeah, mighty microbe. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mighty yeah. microbe, that was it. Oh, the mighty microbes. Oh, that sounds kind of cool. Got votes for blue water ballers, shark blessing. Shark <laughs> blessing. Any other suggestions out there? Mm. Or blessed by the shark, I see. Is Scrabble banned on board the ship because of all the eclectic knowledge on weird names? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I don't know. I think we have a Scrabble board somewhere. Yeah, I don't think it's banned. No, I think, yeah, if you can we demonstrate can. that it's a word. <laughs> mm. There's too much shrimp. to jump. I would love to have a game games. of Scrabble where somebody played mm. Tina 4. That would be great. O only Latin names? <laughs> Scrabble? Yeah, that I would fail. I'll keep score. <laughs> and I think therein lies the problem with playing Scrabble on board. <laughs> Who wants to play Scrabble? I'm not playing with him. I'm not playing with them. I'm not playing with them. I yeah. promise I'm not very good if anyone wants to play me. Okay. Normal Scrabble. But there is some vicious cribbage going on sometimes. Yeah, some vicious cribbage. Hmm. Yeah, I think our watch might suffer from our uh, chocolate intake. <laughs> suffer? What? Or we we're betting chocolate. In terms of the supply. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but we're betting it. Yeah, we're betting with each mates. other. So, <laughs> so Jake Either way, it comes with the chocolate. watch. Okay. <laughs> Phew. We've also been betting with Chris, though, so he's the different yeah. watch. So they might get the fruits of our... Our labor as well. Okay. The uh, suggestion about a team name related to sharks reminds me of um, in Maine in the winter time, there is a uh, toboggan competition when many of the teams. Uh, dress up in costume and so I participated in this one year with a couple folks on a very <laughs> an antique toboggan it was not up for the task but we did it anyway and I had a shark costume and we were called the hammer sled sharks oh, oh. Hey. That is good. hammer sled sharks. yeah that was probably the the best part of that day was our name <laughs> and yeah hammers <laughs> Uh, and not the slip discs that you... Yeah, we, we were very lucky we did not injure ourselves. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, though. Sliding out on the ice. My costume was ridiculous. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> so I uh, was just sliding down a mountain and onto ice with no idea of what was going on. <laughs> Actually, the other, one of the other people on the sled designed a um, anglerfish costume out of a motorcycle helmet, and like had a little lure on the front. It was glowing. Nice. Yeah. Our costume game was fierce. Our sledding <laughs> game was not so much.
All right, so we've passed the 500 meter mark on our ascent. Recovery operations will probably start commencing about 30 minutes or so. Got suggestions for rock hounds or vicious cribbage also. <laughs> vicious quote. courage? Vicious cribbage. Has cribbage. Oh, okay. Oh. Watch name. That's a that's a mouthful. They don't even know <laughs> how vicious this can get. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> vicious cribbage. Can we be the cribbage sharks? Oh. It's only it's only two people in this van that has that that uh s slight addiction to cribbage though, so we don't want to make it exclusive to only the front slight. row. Slight <laughs> slight addiction to cribbage. <laughs> I've been eyeing the game. I just uh I'm not sure if I'm worthy of jumping in. Oh no no, we could all we could always play. Um Something most appropriate to this watch would be be the best name for us. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome to play as long as you have the chocolate snacks. <laughs> Let's get there, Jake. Yeah, we don't need to anchor it. We're just gonna get it out of the way. Nice. What was going on with the manipulator arm there? Oh, we're just, just stowing it so that when we uh, um, put it on the sled, that it doesn't hit the side of the manip. As you can see, it's already gotten lots of tender, loving care. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying yeah. not to beat it up. What were we saying in the mess earlier today? It was the Benthic Explorers, or what was the name? Blue Water Warriors? Blue Water Warriors, was that it? That was one, yeah. Okay, what was, there was another one that was less blue watery and more. Yeah. I just heard Blue Water Voyeurs. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, that was the one that we were discussing, whether an only the Hawaii name would make sense, but it was um, got to be a very long name. Oh, I don't remember what the translation was, though. Translation well, just for a fast kind, it would be like, was it Nakoa okay, Kai Hohonu Warriors of the Deep? But I agree. It is a little long. Oh, it was Warriors of the Deep. Okay, Warriors not the Blue deep. Water Warriors. And then I just went straight through Blue Water Bangas, but Cribbage Warriors of the Deep. <laughs> it's too exclusive. <laughs> next, next time we'll get the name dialed in. I think. Yeah. We do. Ha we are going to have some blue water here over the next day and a half. So our, this watch will be um, the launching watch tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. And then we will be on the recovery that night. So more blue water on the ascent. It's a 16 hour dive? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, I no. want to talk to Chris about that. I think it's a, I think it's a eight. Maybe I, is it 8 p.m.? What were, what were we seeing? It was 20. Yeah. Okay. 8 p.m. Okay. So. Yeah. That makes more sense. Otherwise, I'm going to get no sleep. Twelve hours with the possibility of extending four hours. 
according to the dive plan draft. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to step out of the van and go down into the lab to get some materials ready for recovering the samples. Roger that, Beth. Thanks for the good watch. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for yeah. the fun. Thanks, Beth. Yep, it was a pleasure. I'll see you guys again in the morning. See you in the morning. Happy sampling. So the swell's still coming from this way, so I think we'll just go even more. We'll go to 10. Gotcha. That'll be our recovery heading. Yeah. Rich now. Can we change the heading to zero one zero? Thank you. Oh, lovely. Whoa. Ooh. That's cool. Looks like one of those firework jellies. Was it? I don't know. Oh. It just looked like that. <laughs> well, I don't even know if that's is. what it's called. We know what you're talking about. I don't know what I'm saying.
Seems like everyone's ready for bed. <laughs> yeah. And got quiet. Well, it's the thought that we have to be back at 8 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll wake up and see blue water again. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like a trivia question? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes, yeah. please. Fire. Please. Fire away. All right. Everybody knows what a landlocked country is, right? Yeah. So can anyone name the two countries in the world that are double landlocked, meaning all countries surrounding these countries are also landlocked? Lesotho? <laughs> That's a good question. Whoa. Hmm. It's a very good question. I'm getting a lot of good faces in the van. I wish you could <laughs> see. <them. laughs> I need to. I need to focus on like continent. Yeah. Because uh, I'm like all over the place right now. Yeah. All right. Let me stream the ship forward. Yeah. Yeah. Start streaming. Do my job. That's a really hard question. Any guesses? Anybody in the chat got any ideas? <laughs> um, you want me to read these? I'm not sure if I do. Someone says maybe Kazakhstan and like one of the super tiny countries like Angola. Great guesses. Uh, neither are correct. That's zero one zero, right, Ready? Roger, yep. Okay, thanks. Bridge nav. And uh, can we have the tank secure, air to, to the tuggers, and have the captain on the bridge? Thank you. I think we're all stumped in the control van here. All right, I'll give you a hint. One of the countries is in Europe, and one is in Asia. Like Hungary or something? Uh, I'm trying to think. Hungary Luxembourg. is landlocked, but not double not, landlocked. Not double landlocked, double landlocked, but I'm trying to think what's inland from... I would say Luxembourg. No, it Jake, you're correct. Who, really? Ooh. Wait, no, sorry. Oh. No. <laughs> I was going to say, Luxembourg touches... <laughs> it touches Belgium, there. which yeah. touches... Lichtenstein is correct. Yes, okay. Renato oh, nice. for the point. All right, there's a very Mongolia. large country in Asia. Mongolia. Mongolia. No. Uh, Angolia. No, that's uh, that's Africa. Um. Did you say it off mic? No. Uzbekistan. Yes. Oh, nice. Yes. What? Nice. Right. I, I had to what think. A it had to be one of those things, one of those stands. Wow. Very nice. I never think of Liechtenstein as a real country anyway. It sounds like a fairy tale book country. Should have a movie after it or something. Oh, really? With yeah. apologies to the people in Liechtenstein. Suna has dual citizenship there and Turkey. Oh, oh really? That's a combo. Maybe she's maybe she's listening. She's gonna be like, "It was Luxembourg." <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for being like your friend. 
Control fan, this is Beth in the wet lab. Go ahead. Uh, yes, Beth? Yeah, go ahead, Beth. Yeah, go ahead, Beth. We hear you. you hear us, Beth. Alright Jess, it looks like if anything our current may on be on the other side now. So it might stick you over on that starboard side. I think we're still good to hold position at the surface and we will step over the starboard. If it's wildly off then we'll just ch change course. Continue Roger streaming. That. Yeah, try to crab over there now. 